And finally, we talk about some dehydrohalogenation reactions. These are certainly not less important than dehydration of alcohols. And in fact, you will see that a number of the homework problems are really based on this type of reaction, especially when we have chlorine and bromine and the occasional iodine. All of those are good candidates. One advantage to using this kind of reaction as opposed to the alcohol dehydration is that there are never any rearrangements that occur with alcohols. The fact that you can create carbocations that rearrange is actually a complication that is undesired because in many cases we are trying to locate a double bond in a specific location and, and get just one particular product. And so these dehydrohalogenations are good for that because the double bond is always going to involve the carbon where the halogen was originally attached. Instead of using acids the way we do with alcohol dehydrations, here we use bases. And sometimes those are standard bases that uh, dissolve in water easily like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Um, but these others, the sodium ethoxide or methoxide, those are a little bit stronger than the hydroxides and they also have good solubility in the alkyl halides that are oftentimes your solvent as well as your reactant. Uh, this thing here is potassium tertiary butoxide. It's a tertiary butyl group with an oxygen and in, in all of these cases it's the oxygen that bears a negative charge and that is why they behave as bases. They're able to pull away or abstract a hydrogen, uh, the one shown in red in this example, and um, the halogen leaves as well and that is how you're able to create a double bond. This last slide shows uh, a specific example starting with chlorocyclohexane and in this case using sodium ethoxide. And again, what gets this going is that the ethoxide as a base can remove this hydrogen so it turns itself into a methanol, methanol molecule and the fate of the sodium is to find the chlorine and they make good old sodium chloride. And that sodium chloride will typically precipitate out of the solution because it does not dissolve in, uh, in, in either, either of these other two compounds. Uh, so if you're using your chloride as your solvent as well, then you can kind of tell something's going on as the reaction proceeds if you are creating a precipitate. Uh, but we're really interested in, uh, in, of course, the organic product. And from chlorocyclohexane, all we can make is cyclohexene. Um, we still sometimes get mixtures, so with a bromide like this one, we can find that we remove that bromine along with the hydrogen, either from this methyl group, in which case we get this first product, or we can take a hydrogen from the CH2. So again, we have to also remove a hydrogen as well as the halogen. And so in this case, we can expect two possible products, but would expect more of the one that's more substituted. So a tri-substituted product is formed predominantly over the disubstituted one. Again, these percentages are determined experimentally. There's no way to predict the 29-71 split, but if we were trying to predict one product to be the predominant one, we would expect it to be the one that is more highly substituted. And so this does give us an alternative if we don't have an alcohol to react. Uh, if we have alkyl halides, then those are good candidates. We just need to pull out bases like sodium ethoxide or methoxide and uh, use those in place of acids that we use with the dehydrations.